Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are once again mastering the measure tool. Today we're talking about beat and note spacing using the measure tool, so let's just dive right into that. And as you may be aware, uh, Finale has several ways you can uh, space your music. Uh, from the utilities menu, you have these music spacing, op spacing options right off the bat called uh, Apply Note Spacing, Apply Beat Spacing, or Apply Time Signature Spacing. By default, Finale will usually do the uh, note spacing option for you, and uh, that's Command 4, if you're familiar with that. Command 5 will um, switch you over to beat spacing, which uh, spaces the notes a little bit differently. There's probably some uh, good lessons having to do with the music spacing that uh, we'll probably get to at some point, but um, essentially the difference is the note spacing options, the note spacing uh, is a little bit more linear and it will provide a little bit more space. Let me go back to that um, in circumstances like this where there's 16th notes here. You can see a wider gap between beat 2 and 3 versus beat 3 and 4 in the quarter notes there. Uh, beat spacing is a little bit more uh, strict to the beat. Uh, there's still s uh, extra gap there, but um, it's not as, as, as wide. Time signature spacing, on the other hand, um, will pretty much even out all of the quarter notes in this case in 4-4 four, four, uh, within each measure. Again, they're going to be different from measure to measure, but uh, the, the quarter note spacing will be even within each measure. Um, there's you know value to using either of them. Personally, I, I usually just use the normal note spacing options, and uh, that's, that's what I go with. Um, but I want to just show you sort of what the implications for, these, for this is in the measure attributes window. And we're looking at the bottom section here where it says position notes. Now there's a pull down menu here and the first option here, no change, of course, will uh, be in effect if you're um, uh, you know, trying to change multiple measures at once. Um, if you're doing something else, you want to have no change here so that um, there's no change to those measures if you don't want there to be. And then there's three other options here using beat chart spacing. And this option will be checked if you use either note spacing or beat spacing. So the command four, command five on a Mac um, this option will be checked. There's manually by dragging, which I'll get to in a second, and there's according to time signature, which is that time signature spacing. Now we can directly change any measure or, or all the measures um, with the measure attributes window just by selecting according to time signature. And essentially what that does is it takes this one measure and it essentially does this. It goes to music spacing and applies the uh, music space, uh, applies the time signature spacing. Uh, to that bar. So you can actually directly change it here. Uh, using beat chart spacing, um, once you do that, you kind of have to choose either command 4 or command 5 to get that to to uh, do what you want. The other option there in that, win that pull-down menu is manually. Now, this is literally what it is. This is manually uh, positioning the notes. And if I select this option for measure 6 here, something horrible is going to happen. <laughs> You'll see that it will put all of those notes in one stack on the vertical here. And Finale is saying, hey, you want to manually space this? Go for it. So you would have to go into the, uh, you know, the special tools here and figure out a way to find all the right handles and put them where you want them to. And, you know, uh, I guess this has its uses at in certain cases, but um, this is a, an extremely difficult way to do this. You could also do it from the uh, speedy entry tool if you can manage to grab the the right note head and everything so that's you know that's what manual is it's sort of very manual so um, but it is available to you if you need it now when you have uh, the beat chart spacing selected um, every measure will get this little uh, second triangle underneath uh, you know in, in the right bar line there's two triangles here I talked or uh, handles sorry not triangles uh, I talked about the, the top handle in the previous video, which is allowing you to change the measure width on either side of this bar line. The bottom handle will allow you to uh, position the beats within the measure. Now there's a sort of a difference between um, note spacing, beat spacing, and time signature spacing. First of all, if I were to go here and do time signature spacing, those handles go away. So when you have things time signature spaced, you have no control over the position of the beats within the measure. When you have things uh, note spaced, I just command four, um, you'll get handles on every single rhythmic position uh, that exists in the measure. So the number of handles here will change depending on the bar that you select. In fact, if I go up here to the top and do this first measure, there's only one note, so you only get one handle, right? The second one 
has two half notes, so you get two handles. Four uh, notes, you get four handles, uh, including rest. So even a rest will get um, a, a handle there. And uh, even complex rhythms like this one here at the end of the system where I've got eighth notes, quarter notes, and the, uh, the, qu the half note triplets, uh, you will get handles for every single piece of that. So here's the first beat, first eighth note, uh, second beat, here is the second part of the triplet, and then the third beat, etc. So you can kind of see that you, know, you will get handles for every unique rhythmic position. I'm going to show you what those handles do in a, in a second, I promise. Um, if you go to uh, beat spacing instead of note spacing, so I just command 5, you will only ever get four handles in 4-4 four, four times. So every single measure will have uh, four handles, uh, including the measures with less than four notes. You'll get four handles. And these, uh, these handles um, work in uh, specific ways. So that's kind of what I wanted to get to next. So I'm just going to go back here and go into the note spacing because this is likely what you'll probably be using most of the time. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the beat spacings in a second. So with these handles, what you're seeing essentially is two rows of handles. Now the first row you can't do anything with. You can grab them as much as you want. There's nothing you can be done with it. They're just sort of reference points. And actually they're kind of uh, uh, reference points for beat spacing, I believe. So if this measure was beat spaced at this width, this is sort of how these notes would be laid out in the beat spacing. You don't have control over this. You have control over the bottom part, which is the note spacing, which, as you can see, sort of modifies the, n the note positions uh, from the beat spacing to something else. Again, the note spacing is going to allow a little bit more um, you know, space between 16th notes than would normally be allowed uh, if all these notes were kind of rigidly structured in the, in the measure which is why you're seeing sort of in the second beat, these lines get a little bit splayed out, right? It's sort of giving you more room. And as you get towards the end of the measure, uh, the lines get a little bit more vertical. It's just, it's technical about how things are spaced. But the, the, you know, the important thing is that we have control over these handles, which means that all you have to do is with your mouse, just grab one of them and you can drag this bottom handle left or right wherever you need to. So, and when you do that, you can see that that last eighth note got moved. Now. This is sort of important sometimes in s very certain circumstances where you've got things getting in the way. Sometimes this is handy to, to do, right? Um, and the critical thing to know about this is that these will actually s move the entire beat. So if I choose this one, which is on beat four, it's going to move not only the, beat, the clarinet part, but also the, the quarter note on beat four and the piano part. So again, this is moving everything basically within the stack, right? If there's only one note in the stack on this eighth note, it's only going to move that eighth note. This one, however, is going to move the entire beat like that, right? Um, and even, you know, with these complex ones, if you can find the, you know, the, the uh, half note triplet here, you can move that one independently of everything else. So... Uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of flexibility that you can do with these. Now I should point out that when you manipulate the beats like this, I again it, it manipulates the whole stack, which is completely different than if you do something like the uh, the note position tool from the special tools, which will allow you to move notes horizontally. But if I move this C in the or C sharp in the B flat clarinet part, you'll see that it will move it independently of beat four in the piano part. So that's the major difference. And actually the same thing happens uh, in speedy entry or simple entry. You can move these notes and they will move independently of the rest of the beat. So uh, it is kind of important to know kind of what you're doing um, and, and why you need to do it. Uh, more often than not, you're gonna be better off using the measure tool to manipulate the beat so that everything will move all at once. Uh, otherwise you'd be you know, moving every single note on beat three here, which would be sort of a, a pain in the neck. Now, as you saw before, the beat spacing, uh, command five, uh, will only give you four handles. And now these handles will work a little bit differently. In this case, the top section here, the top handles, are sort of representing the time signature spacing because they're very evenly spaced. Uh, every single quarter note is sort of evenly spaced within the, the width of the measure. But you can see that the, um, the bottom ones are splayed out, particularly in the, between the second and third beat. So beat spacing is still going to give you a little bit of extra room compared to time signature spacing for things like 16th notes. So it still is sort of using a, uh, a beat chart or a, or a note spacing chart. Um, it's just that it's a little bit, um, it's a little less wide than the note spacing, I guess. Um, and these handles will work differently now. So because there's no uh, handles between beats two and three, whenever I move, let's say, this third handle, 
what you'll see is that the third beat will move over, but the 16th notes in between will sort of uh, get squished proportionally or get expanded proportionally if I move it the other way. Um, so again, in this case, you wouldn't have to move every single 16th note to kind of evenly space that 16th note in that manner. So just a big difference between how those handles work between uh, beat spacing and note spacing. And the other thing I want to look at in the measure attributes window is that option that exists below the position notes drop down menu called evenly across measure. Now this is an interesting option and uh, actually let me go back and do it over here. If I select that option on a measure like this, uh, some, you might think that the notes will all of a sudden be get evenly across the measure, but it doesn't exactly have that effect. It's sort of for a specific um, uh, circumstance, and I'm going to take a look at this uh, these three four measures here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the horn part here, and I'm going to enter three quarter notes. It's going to move me over to the next measure, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to try and enter a fourth note here. And you'll see that I get my, there are too many beats in this measure. Oh, and Michael McLennan's little uh, uh, keyboard maestro script came up for me. So thanks, Michael, for that. Um, uh, he's, he gave me this little script that will uh, very quickly get me out of this window just by pressing a letter. So in this case, I want to leave measures alone. So I'm just going to press L, and it does that automatically for me. I love that little utility. Uh, but anyway, you see that when you enter more notes in a measure than what the measure is supposed to have, the finale will sort of put those first three notes in the right place, and then that fourth note off to the right, sort of in the same spacing, but it's kind of on the bar line. It's not exactly, um, doesn't exactly look appropriate. But with that option in the uh, evenly across measures, what this does, amazingly, is it takes those four notes and spaces them evenly in this 3-4 measure. Um, which is kind of wild, uh, and in fact, we could um, we could add as many as we want. Again, we kind of have to go through this, and I could even go back and enter another one. And uh, so now I've got five notes. And again, if I just uh, check this option for evenly across measures, now you can put five notes in here. Um, so this is really an interesting application. Uh, we can get sort of unique things like this where, you know, you can actually use this for a cadenza if you want. You don't really need to uh, mess with the, you know, time signature and hide, hiding a time signature and all that stuff. There's sort of, this is another way to do that if you want. And there's a couple tricks to this that I want to show you, which I think is really handy. So first of all, with the measure tool, you can select a whole bunch at once and um, go into the measure attributes. And of course, we can check this for evenly across measures. And this will apply for measures 9 through 14. So we could do this uh, on the whole thing here. And then what we can do also in speedy entry here, uh, if we uh, deselect some of these options, first of all, um, check for extra notes. If we deselect that, then that, that menu will never come up. Uh, we can also deselect jump to next measure. And there's one option in the speedy option that uh, if we uncheck fill with rests at end of measure, so I've just unselected those three options there, um, this allows us some incredible flexibility to do some crazy things here where Finale will just let me keep on putting in quarter notes there until I'm done, and then when I press the right arrow to move to the next frame, it will fill that out. So now I've got six quarter notes in a 3-4 bar. I could put two and go uh, press right, and it will you know, evenly space those two notes in that 3-4 bar. So again, you can also just choose any rhythm you want, as many as you want. You can keep going as long as you want. After a while, it's not going to know how to... Um, deal with the, uh, the beams and everything, so you'll have to do a little bit of manual adjusting there. But uh, you can see that you can get some kind of crazy stuff like this. And, you know, this is, like I said, this is sort of another way to do a cadenza without having to change the time signature to something crazy and then display as 3-4, that whole thing. So uh, something like this is possible. There are some similar options that will help in the simple entry. If you use a simple entry person, if you deselect check for extra notes, and if you deselect, fill with uh, rest at end of measures, uh, this will allow you to do uh, some of the same things in simple entry. Uh, so yeah, so that's kind of cool. I should mention that uh, when you do use this option from the measure attributes, the uh, evenly across measures, just be aware that Finale will never, ever, ever play this back correctly. It really has <laughs> no idea what to do with these measures. It will sort of try and play 
you know, the quarter notes in line with each other and then the rest of them, it's like, uh, okay, we're going to go to the next measure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it, it can be done for visual effect, but just be aware that you will never, ever be able to play this back correctly. Um, but uh, that's, that's, uh, that's what it is. So you have that option uh, to do stuff like that. All right, so, um, yeah, I think that's it for beat and note positioning in, in uh, the measure attributes window there. I hope this has helped. Uh, I think on the next lesson, we're going to start talking about some of the other um, options in the measure attributes window on the right side for behavior. So there's some interesting things about that as well. So come back for that. All right. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon on the next video.